Welcome to Debating Dating, a podcast with me, Rachel Graham. And me, Mark Jennings. We're back for our Christmas special, guys. We hope you are well. We haven't been with you for a while, but we're back now. Christmas time, we thought, what better time to put out another debate in Dayton? We did say we'd be back before the end of the year, and we've just... <laughs> We've just scraped in right at the end. We didn't lie, really. Like Indiana you know? Jones just getting under that wee door before it closes. <laughs> we just get back in at the end. 2021. 2021. We have kept promises made, promises kept, as Donald Trump would say. We're just in at the end of the year. We're back uh, after a bit of a hiatus. Rachel, how have you been? I've been really good, yeah. I've been enjoying 2021. It's yeah. been nice. You've enjoyed a year that many have uh, felt has been horrible, but... I mean, it's been, <laughs> yeah, but... It's... Well, I suppose since we last spoke, everything's kind of opened up again, because, like, yeah. when we were when we finished the, the series there, we were still kind of in lockdown and stuff like that. Things were just starting to reopen, I think, but uh, now, kind of, things have been back happening again. Everything's yeah. more or less back to normal for the time being. We'll see how this uh, new variant goes, the old Omicron, but... Yes. Uh, no, things have been back open and... We've been able to work again, aye. which has been nice. And this is actually, if you're just listening to this, you might not be aware, but this is actually the first episode that we've ever recorded in the same room. We're I know. actually <laughs> doing this in person. It's quite strange, actually. As it's, it's nice. I, I kind of preferred having the distance oh, really? of a... <laughs> A Zoom uh, between me and you. Because I'll be hanging about later like, what are you up to? I know, I'll never get a day. At least I can just go, right, I, I need to go my, my dinner's on or whatever. Whereas now, we're just here. Do you want to hang out? Do you want to paint? Are they getting ready, man? But yeah. it's good. It's nice not to have that delay, I suppose. Oh, but... totally. I mean, it's nice to just be in real life and to not have the kind of pressure and stress of technology. Absolutely. And also, the little Christmas tree is very cute. For what anyone who's watching. For for those watching, so we are available on YouTube. If you're just listening on Spotify, uh, we'll describe the scene. So we're in uh, we're in my place where I would normally record from. Both of us are here in person. I've got a nice wee Christmas tree up. I'm also wearing a nice Christmas jumper. Uh, it's mm-hmm. got the Tenants logo on it. They gave me it for free a couple of years ago. Not a sponsored ad unless they just thought we're going to play the long game here. <laughs> uh, Rachel, of course, wearing a very lovely dress. Rachel, Thank if you don't mind much. me saying, it's very nice. Made an effort. It's, our, it's like our Christmas night out. This isn't it? is our Christmas night out, I guess. Because we're self employed, so we don't really have. It's our Christmas co-workers. night out, but this is also the first work we've done in months. <laughs> so it's a kind of weird, like, you know, working, socialising. It's all mixed oh, up. I'm all about play. Do you know, like, work hard, play hard? I'm just all about playing. Yeah. I'm like, I'd love to get paid to do nothing and then just celebrate about it. And that's yeah. what we're kind of doing. Well, right working now. hard, not really in your wheelhouse, is it, Rachel? <laughs> Hey, I have lots of different jobs, okay? That is very true. What, so you have been doing some Yeah, some I've been doing theatre. been doing yeah. some theatre. Yeah, I've been cast. I did The Fringe. I was in a play. Mm-hmm. I did a children's show. Uh, I've been doing voiceover work, radio plays. It's actually, that's what's been nice about 2021 and mm-hmm. like kind of why we're a bit later coming back is that we actually have time and have lives now. Absolutely. Whereas last year we were like... Do you want to hang out and do a podcast? Yeah. And... Well, Rachel's you're bringing yourself up here, you know, giving all your actors CV. Really, you're always trying to do... I'm doing really well, guys. Try to do well. <laughs> Would you like to tell the listeners what, what you've been doing recently? No, I would not. <laughs> <laughs> you've been working in a bar and uh, being a babysitter like yeah. uh, someone who's 18. <laughs> <laughs> Who has, to be fair, most of your colleagues in that bar <laughs> like that age. I know. Well, I'm very overqualified for work that I should be doing 10 years ago. Absolutely. But what can I say? No, no, it's good to see. Well, that's part of the that's part of the grind, <laughs> I suppose. But Yeah, got to have that sweet, sweet B job. But Absolutely. you've been gigging. I've been back doing some stand-up. It's been good because it's weird because when we were doing the podcast, like, when we were doing the first series, like, uh, I hadn't done stand-up in like well over a year. Yeah. Or like, around about a year. And then obviously by the time we finished, like, it was well over a year. But... Uh, aye, it's been good I, I, it's came back a lot I've, and I've managed to get back in here a lot quicker than I thought I would yeah. I thought it was going to take ages before I felt comfortable and before things even opened up but yeah. I was, I, my diary picked up quite quickly and I wrote loads of new stuff I didn't want to do any old jokes so I have wrote loads of new stuff and it quite quickly I'd done a week at the fringe and it quickly coalesced and I was like oh cool this is like actually alright so, well you had basically we were locked in the house nothing to do if you didn't have new material then it's Aye, it's pretty bad. It was pretty bad. I'm not saying it was good, but... It's, <laughs> hey, it was there. It's definitely it was new. new. It's definitely new. But yeah. no, it's been good fun. And you were saying about... Uh, you recently... Just to give you some lowdown on what's been happening, 
recently went for an eye test, Rachel. I did, right. So the last time that I went for an eye test was 1999, mm-hmm. which I didn't realise. So I was like six. So oh my God. I needed to get my eyes tested because I felt like I was like looking and things were a bit blurry, right? So I got my eyes tested and the woman was like, you have better than 20-20 vision. Mm-hmm. You've got great eyesight don't need glasses and i was like well that's really weird because everything's really bloody so then i was like okay which is a like, telltale sign that you might need to go for an eye test yeah, it? <laughs> mm, can you help me so yeah so like i went and they were like yeah it's blurry so they did a bit more tests and they were like yeah basically you've got really dry eyes so the like film of your eye should be like very smooth mm-hmm. but actually because it's dry it's like a bit like rougher or whatever mm. so i'm looking through and things are like that so it's basically like screen time like hot places it's just made it super dry not blinking enough which surprises me because you are a very emotional person and for somebody that greets as much as you do <laughs> i can't believe you get dry eyes i must the only solution must be that just because you've been in a relationship the last couple of months <laughs> that's been a bit of collateral damage is it because you're not greeting all the time about all these dates all these you're going boys. on and that sort of stuff <laughs> This guy's kept you emotionally stable to the point where it's became a medical condition. <laughs> That's exactly what's happened. <laughs> I know, I never put two and two together, but there you go. That's why, as I've been campaigning for, you know, and actually a lot of the listeners have been saying, I can't believe Rachel got in a relationship and all that, but actually I, I would know. say that uh, Rachel... It's been good. It's been good fun. We'll get into that a wee bit later. It's been good fun. Very Things nice guy good. that you're with. It's all yeah. good. But that's not what we're here for. We're here to talk no, about dating. We're here to talk about the nitty gritty, horrible stuff. <laughs> to save you guys that are on the single lifestyle. Or if you're in a relationship and you just enjoy listening to us talk about all our We don't hardships. want to focus on being very happy and life working out. Well, the dynamic has changed because now we've got one person, me, who is single and talking mm-hmm. about dating. But we've also got the relationship yeah. stuff that we can get some insights and from you now that you've been yeah. in a relationship for a few months and both of those are going to be covered within the episode yeah. we've got some audio submissions as ever thanks to everyone who sent them in we've got a few to listen to throughout the episode and we're going to start off by talking about um like christmas nights out and stuff we've got about to listen to but before we get into that actually like how are you are you feeling quite christmasy it's coming up soon yeah i'm feeling very christmasy but i think it's because i've not been working very much like you feel like your whole life is just that week between Christmas and New Year. <laughs> like, I don't even know what day it is. Because I'm not working and I don't have any purpose in my life. Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah, 24-7, 365 for you. I'm just eating stuff and like, oh, one day it'll be Christmas, one day it'll be New Year. <laughs> Everyone looks at you like a weirdo when you go Christmas caroling in July. Or whatever, like, <laughs> no, eating I... stuff in every day. But why has it just got to be December 25th? You're exactly. Like I know. You know. No, I just don't see I many do feel pigs and blankets in Easter, do you? I know you don't. <laughs> I wonder why. It's because it's a Christmas meal. Well, I know, but it's still very tasty. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it DIY. You can just buy sausages and wrap it around it if you really, if you really want. But that would seem a bit. That would seem unhinged. Yeah, yeah. yeah do you know? I actually, so. I got broken up with uh, years ago. And was it because you bought sausages and wrapped bacon around them? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was a uh, well. So we broke up, and then I made myself like a microwavable. Uh, Sunday dinner uh-huh. and I put it in the microwave and I just thought this is the bleakest thing I've ever done it was like July and I was like how sad and I think Sunday dinner needs to be a winter thing I think Sunday dinner is like an English thing like yeah. we were I was talking about this recently how because like you know harvesting and all these kind of things are yeah. like big in England but yeah, yeah and I've seen somebody saying on Twitter the other day it's like oh you can't get a good Sunday roast in Glasgow and I was like if you want to get a good Sunday roast fuck off to England <laughs> <laughs> no, a lot of people like Sunday roast, but I just don't like Yorkshire puddings and all that kind of stuff. You don't not like big, Yorkshire puddings? Don't like Yorkshire puddings, don't like steak pie. Not a big fan of either York- of those, which are staples of the Sunday roast, really. Well, do you know, I don't really have a Sunday roast, but I feel like Christmas Day is just a Sunday roast. I know, it? but it's the best Sunday roast Oh, totally. Going. But do you know, I think it's all the other bits around, like the, the centrepiece that make it nice, but Yorkshire puddings are my favourite. Yeah. So anyway, let's steal this back to Christmas, <laughs> fuck's sake. Why are you Sorry. Yorkshire puddings? I, you me, fucking brought up Yorkshire puddings. That is true. But you brought up Sunday roasts. I did, yeah. You know, you're just trying to go, hey, I get broken up with guys. That's it. <laughs> hey, remember me? I'm still I'm still uh, I'm still one of you <laughs> still guys. Dre. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, it's been good. Like it's sort of it always creeps up on you. Yeah. Um Christmas because uh, it's like the end of the because I think 
you start to see some people putting their Christmas decorations up early, don't you? And you're like, it's too early. And you, you sometimes you go, it's too early, too early. And then you go, you go, you, you're so used to being in that mindset. Then you go, oh, it's actually next week. Oh, exactly. Like, <laughs> That's what I feel like. Because I'm really like, I don't want to expend my excitement too early. Yeah. So I really, I'm someone who really waits till December. Aye. And there's lots of like quite, yeah, like you look down on people who do it too early. You're like, I'm always Aye. a bit like, mm, they don't have a, enough of a life or enough things to keep them going. I feel like December, like first of December now is like normal for everybody. It, just, it used to yeah. be like 10 days before or whatever. Now it's just normal. As soon as it hits December, I know. get those lights When did you put your tree up? Uh, I don't know. Your tree's already up. I know. Uh, I don't know. We put it up like, I probably like second week, of Dece- first or second week of December, I guess. Yeah. The My mum doesn't let me do it before the 12th. That's funny that, you know, like, you should still be that strict about that. Yeah. Also, I've moved out and I'm like, my mum doesn't let me. <laughs> I know, I know. You can do whatever you want. You can put that tree I up. I know. Whenever. I know. Anyway. But when it, anyway, so let's move on to actually talking about dating. Yep. Guys, so we thought we'd like, we thought you might like, like a wee bit of a catch up with us since you've not heard for us for a while. A wee bit of chat. That's probably a wee bit of a longer episode as well. You know, we festive special, like, yeah. remember in the office used to be like an hour or something like that when they do <laughs> like, the Christmas yay. special? Probably about an hour and a half or something, depending on the, the quality of the content. <laughs> you might need to put a lot of this in the chopping It'll be block. Ten, 10 minutes, and you'll be like, why is this podcast so short? I'll tell you, you won't be hearing that story about that fucking microwave meal, that's for sure. <laughs> now you need to keep it in. Uh, that's true, I'm a bastard. But, uh, <laughs> so we've got a couple, so we'll get to our first submissions. So our first submissions of this episode, and for a while, um, so, we'll get, so we've got two on Christmas night, so a big staple of the, the festive calendar, and certainly, I, pre- I think when you get to an adult, it's more about the Christmas night suit, really, than the presents and that, you know, yeah. that board way, but going in night suit and stuff like that, and particularly works night suit, are where a lot of things happen, and particularly when it comes to dating, and being single and all that sort of stuff, that's where some excitement can happen, when you go Christmas night out, and that person you fancy in the office or whatever, yeah. is, you know, that's when you make your move. So yep. I think that's what happened in this first submission here. So we'll have a wee listen to this right now. So my Christmas dating story is I am from Ireland. I am in pharmacy. I had a crush on my pharmacist I worked with back in 1999. And uh, we're at the Christmas party. So I was drinking shots called Slippery Nipples. by are Zambuga <laughs> with a Guinness head um, to build up the confidence to talk to him. And had a good few of those. And I don't usually drink. Um dancing on the dance floor trying to be all sexy and seductive <laughs> next thing i knew i woke up in the hotel room it was 7 a.m and i was covered in vomit and um, woke my friends up who were in the room with me who told me um, i had followed him out to the reception uh, sat beside him and proceeded to vomit into his lap <laughs> destroying his clothes he had to leave and go home and they put me to bed and um, when i went into work about two days later it was horrifyingly embarrassing. I bought him a new shirt and tie as a gesture. And shortly after, he left the company and uh, never to be seen again. But I'm sure um, it's purely a coincidence. And just for the record, I have never had slippery nipples since, well, in the alcohol sense anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. How bad would the fear be the next day? Oh, that's pretty bad. First of all, a slippery nipple yes. is Sambuca with a Guinness head. Yeah, and you pour the Guinness, uh, the is it not a Bailey's on top? I it don't looks know. like a Guinness. Do you know what? I'm a shit bar person. Well, it, well, <laughs> how would you put Guinness on top of It just floats Sambuca, on top. Does it? Yeah, or it, it definitely, I thought it was Bailey's and then you put the Maybe Bailey's and then it looks like a Guinness. Maybe that's an Irish Slippery nipples, Guinness, and it's barely seen. Yeah, it, maybe. Uh, but no, that's quite, I mean, that's quite a fucked up show. I think shots are definitely like one of those things, and particularly on Christmas night, so you always have them in it, and it's like just, they're always the worst idea. As you, soon as shots happen, you know that you're going to hate yourself the next day, uh, and it's going to be horrific. And then that is not a good, certainly when you're in work people and all that as well. Oh my God. Like you kind of always, that's the thing everybody always says in it when, you're on a works night. I just don't want to be the one everyone's talking about in the morning. Exactly, all the office gossip. But if you've fired into some guy in your office that you fancy and then ended up vomiting on them, I'm afraid to say you're going to be the talk around the water cooler <laughs> come the new year. I know, but isn't it like, see, before the office party, I used to always think, well, like, 
this Christmas night out is when you can kind of like you don't have to be professional. Aye. You can kind of shoot your shot. You can like go for it. You can kind of like show what you've been feeling for months. It's the appropriate time, isn't it? To actually like make because you know like guys, you know you hear guys a lot saying news like, oh, but can we not even talk to women anymore? And it's like no, but you need to do it at an appropriate time. Exactly. And like, if there's someone in your work that you fancy, whatever. A night out of any kind, not just at Christmas, if you have a what's night out, that's when, if you've been a wee bit flirty with somebody or whatever, yeah. that's the appropriate time to, you know, you know, you get a drink and, and then, you know, we, we see, you see what happens there, yeah. you know, rather than, you know, pest on somebody in their bloody office or whatever. Yeah. So that's when the magic can happen. And you've had a drink so you can like balance your nerves a wee bit. I had that when I was working in a restaurant and I fancied this guy and I... But I was also working in a bar, so I was working in a restaurant and a bar. Uh-huh. And there was two Christmas nights out and I wanted to combine them, right? So I combined them. I was like, oh, we should all go to the same place, right? So it was like combined, which just meant there was more people to like see if you embarrassed yourself. Do you know oh, what I mean? So you, I, so it's not even as if if you embarrass yourself in front of in- one of group, you have people, <laughs> at least in the NMC, it's like literally every person that I know. I did not think that through. Like, yeah, at all. that was a bad idea. It was a bad idea. That well, was really you trying to get out of like having to choose yes you brought them there and then what happened yeah well so basically i fancied this guy and then a uh, my friend we all worked together the three of us and then my friend i convinced her to have like a house party so that we could all have somewhere to go afterwards sure. um, but i think he had like an ex-girlfriend we went to the casino by the river mm-hmm. and i think he, an ex-girlfriend was there so he was all distracted by that but anyway it kind of worked out well we all went back but it was me and my friend and this guy were just sharing my friend's bed and we were all in the bed together and it was fine. Like we were just like chatting and all this kind of stuff. I, th- I think Did you want kissed. the friend to fuck off? No, no, no. Because it was my friend who, she was basically being the best wing woman ever because right. she like. Sounds like it. You know, the fucking threesome by the <laughs> sounds <laughs> And then we all took our clothes off. <laughs> uh, no, so like she was amazing and she just made it all happen. And then, but like, there was no other beds and there was no things. So we just ended up being in the same bed or whatever, but it was uh, fine. I think we might have kissed, I don't even remember. But um, but what happened was about five in the morning, her mum, because she was living at home, her mum came home and like, didn't know there was going to be this. And there'd been loads of people around. Why is there three people in my bed? <laughs> she came back and she was just like, I could, like, she thought that there was some sort of threesome going on. And she was like, she was like, you need to respect this house more. Uh, like, there's all three of you in that bed and I don't know what's going on and, like, basically thought that we were yeah. having a threesome and I was just like... And it's so embarrassing because, like, I'd grown up with her so I had to be like, please tell your mum that we weren't having a threesome. Uh, so basically the mum thought you were a lot cooler and have that much better <laughs> night than you actually were. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's much. even worse when you get reprimanded and you've no even... You're not even... ...had the fun, I suppose. <laughs> God, man. I know. Fuck having a threesome with your friend, though. I feel like that would not be good... Fair enough. Well, you've just counted you dis- one out. <laughs> <laughs> and I know your boyfriend's very disappointed because he has been asking me. Has he been texting It was me? actually going to be your Christmas surprise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, right. Okay, never mind. I'm so sorry. I love it. <laughs> no, thank God for that. I've dodged that fucking mistletoe. I don't know that much. <laughs> oh, my God, mistletoe. Right, we'll have a listen to this other one, which is also a, a work related theme, and it's another tale of a, hooking up with someone on a works night out. Oh, God. So, there was a new dentist that started at this practice that I was working at in um, yeah, central London, and um, he was planning on leaving this girlfriend. He was really unhappy with her. Um, he'd been at our work for about six weeks or whatever, and then at the Christmas night out, we got an Uber back, but I had my own Uber because I lived in East and he lived in South West or something like that. And then he was like, oh, I'll just get in your Uber and then when from yours, I'll go back to mine. And I was like, yeah, but you're in the opposite direction. So what's the point in that? You may as well just get a separate Uber. And he was like, no, no, we can have a chat. And I was like, right, okay. So we get to mine and then he was like, oh, do you mind if I just come in and use your toilet? And I was like, oh, that old chestnut. I was like, yeah, that's fine. So he comes in and uses the toilet. And then I went to show him the way out and then he slammed the door. <laughs> And then he just sort of like picked me up, went upstairs. And then one thing led to another. Which makes me sound really bad, I know, but... Makes him sound fucking bad. <laughs> <laughs> like he barges his way into your face and when they leave. But I mean, I guess it sounds like, you know, <laughs> she couldn't have been that against I don't, I don't, Wait, I don't did know. he have a girlfriend? Well, yeah, apparently. That, so this was it. I was told from him that he was leaving this girlfriend or whatever. <gasps> then we get back after the Xmas break 
And then he told another dentist there that I'd given him a blowjob or whatever. I don't know. And he got spread. <laughs> from- <laughs> she fucking knows. I know. <laughs> And our manager brought us in and that we had to speak about it because it was awkward because we, me and him weren't talking and then when we spoke about it on one to one just me and him he was like yeah I'm not leaving my girlfriend now I can't leave her because um, she's pregnant and I was just like are you joking I can't believe this how have I got into this situation oh uh, and it's just something I'll never ever live down oh my god that's so bad also the bit of like having to be like reprimanded in work is like my worst nightmare Uh, what's going on with you two because everybody obviously knows in the office but i just think that thing that is heavy bang out from him because like if you're telling someone that you're going to leave your partner and all that sort of stuff Mm -hmm. like they then they can be like all right well you know at least they're going to break up yeah. and then they stay together. I feel like if that ever, I mean, maybe this is just me being like old and jaded, but sure. like, I feel like very rarely, I think if you have to say, oh, I'm going to break up with them, no. it's not going to happen. They're not going to do it. No. Don't you think? I absolutely just want to have their cake and eat it. It sounds like, exactly. right? but I, that is so awkward because it's like, oh, just could you imagine? It's, I really hate being like, I, I've really realised that I really like to be like good and the teacher's pet and not like break any rules so the idea of like being in your workplace where you're meant to be professional and having to be like told off for Um. like giving someone a (laughs) blowjob i would hate that i know and it wouldn't and the fact that they all know that he's in a relationship let's see if they then broke up and then it'd be like oh well you know like he wasn't happy in his relationship and now he's with her or whatever but the fact that like like he didn't he do just... that it makes her look bad and she didn't actually do anything wrong really like i mean no. she sh- wasn't he? she wasn't in the relationship though well yeah i would say like the burden of you know like it's always the, the responsibility woman. no the, the burden of responsibility is always on the person that's in the relationship, in the relationship yeah you know what i mean if you're single and you know i mean it's like should you do it probably no but like i mean it's not your commitment that you're exactly. breaking or whatever i i feel like there's it's like a gray area like I think there's like some responsibility if you're like aware that that person is in a relationship, Aye. but ultimately the main thing is the person who is in the relationship. It's sad though as well because like, see Christmas, I think there is a wee part of me, and I think this is true for a lot of people around Christmas time festive, it does feel a wee bit magic and you're like, oh, you know, maybe something will happen. And like, yeah. particularly if you fancy somebody in your office or whatever, and then, oh, they've got the big night out coming, I wonder what's going to happen. And even in that yeah. scenario, it's like, oh, he's telling, he's going to leave her and all this sort of stuff, maybe we'll get together. And then it happens and you're like, oh my God, all my dreams have come true. It's a Christmas miracle. <laughs> and then you get into work and you're like, oh, so you're staying with her and uh, she's pregnant? Oh, cool. Like, Oh my God. And there's, I think that's a really gutting feeling because you can get swept up in the Christmas excitement and tell yourself that, you know, like something really cool is going to happen. You know, the person you really like, oh, it's all going to come together at the Christmas night out and stuff. I've certainly had that before. Yeah. Like I remember... When I worked, uh, years ago when I worked in a supermarket and like we went on our big night out and like it was pure like loads of young folk and that and there's like loads of people from the place like worked there. So we went on this big night out um, and the last day that I was sort of, had been sort of seen and I was like kind of hoping we would kind of get back kind of together or whatever and yeah. stuff. And so like all through I'm kind of looking forward to this Christmas night out. The night comes, I go along there and I'm like, hey, I wonder what's going to happen. Hopefully bump in there at some point and all that. And then I find out that night at the Christmas party that she's going out with another guy from the work. Oh, and no. And I was pure gutted, man. Did you cry? No, I never cried, obviously. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, like, I, I did uh, I did vomit all over. <laughs> In between instead. her legs. Yeah, on purpose, obviously. <laughs> no, uh, no, I was pure gutted, like, and I was like, oh, my God. And it was like, do you know that way, like, oh, the dream, and then it came crashing down. And I'm uh. like, welcome to reality. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true though like you do even if you're like not even that into christmas like the streets are nicer it's like all the lights Aye. and like when it's snowing it's like that whole like and it feels it's almost nice. this pressure even when you're talking to people and you're like oh we should have a drink before christmas not it? it yeah. almost feels like you need to build up to christmas and like, something's going to happen during christmas it's like when you year or uh, yeah. it's so much pressure of a good night i think christmas is like that as well especially when you're single because yeah. like 
you know, you want to get a single, like, you want to get Christmas and you've maybe at least got a wee bit of an interest and you think, oh, it's going into a new year, maybe I'll start off and me and this person that I like will be in a relationship or whatever and it's all going to build up to this crescendo yeah. on, you know, the magical night of Christmas and then when it doesn't happen, uh, you know, it's a bit of a letdown. Yeah. But I think sometimes that's where, the mo- I think that's why sometimes the most embarrassing moments can happen around Christmas because you can get caught up in all of that sort yeah. of stuff. And then if it's the added thing of it like being somebody for your work and, you know, it's like this big thing. Yeah. And then it's like, I need to hand in my P45 in January because <laughs> I just can't even stand the shame of... Oh my God, the, the shame and the fear of... I know. Yeah. But that's so true. Like, I used to always find with like, I'd, I'd want... Most of the time I was like looking for a boyfriend in my single years. Yeah. And, but then there was like the cringe element of like when it was near Christmas or Valentine's Day yeah. of like missing the timing. And I feel like that, I used to always feel like that of being like, if I was swiping, I'd be like, oh, I want to like match with someone that gives me enough time to talk to them, that gives me enough time to go on a date that it's not like right before Christmas. Or mm. what if you've got a certain amount of time, it's like three weeks before Christmas, it's like, do you acknowledge that it's Christmas? Are you a couple? Or is this a thing like so much? Whereas the, the big thing on the date naps and now... Uh, as someone who's still traversing them. Yes, please tell me. The, everybody's bio right now on date naps is like, just looking for someone to go to the Christmas market with. Oh, no. <laughs> I fucking hate the and Christmas market. And my bio market. is, I'll take you to the Christmas market. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to actually do that though when it's hell. It's just, my picture's just me standing outside <laughs> a bratwurst stand like, this could be you. Putting your arm out like, <laughs> insert here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny the christmas market i went to the christmas market last week did you yeah Chorus, but classic. no but i didn't do you know i'm not i'm not as basic as that i'd like to say yeah. i just wanted to walk past it and see what it was like because i was in edinburgh anyway um but I mean, unless you like like so like german sausage cheese or mulled wine there's not a lot else for you to do, is there? No, that makes it sound a lot nicer than it is. Like, it's just tat. Like, it's just yeah. cheap, horrible tat. And then you have to... And it's so Where busy. Where one did you go to? The Edinburgh one. Oh, did you go to Edinburgh one yeah, as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, was it not great? Well, no? it's just... It just feels really, like... It just felt really horrible and very much, like, not like not a nice version of Christmas, you know what I mean? But um, but we went for, like, two this minutes. This isn't what Christmas is all about. Christmas is about getting hundreds of presents. Yep. The Coca-Cola van. Yep. And just, you know, commercialism. Yeah. I don't like all this stuff where you walk about a place and you can smell food. No, do you know what was not nice? <laughs> do, you know what was not, do you know what was not nice about this it? This is too much of people spending time with their loved ones. And I don't like it at all. <laughs> no, you couldn't spend time with your loved ones. It was, it was so Holidays busy. Holidays are coming. And they were selling like like plasticky rubbish and it was just it just felt in terms of like covid and cop 26 it just felt very like against all the things that we should be doing do you know what i mean you should want to get away from it you think christmas is should be cancelled because it is a uh, not economically friendly that was probably true yeah. or environmentally friendly I well i say. just think maybe we could be a bit more conscious anyway this is a very boring chat for me but do you know what i mean it just felt a bit like even fucking santa claus is woke <laughs> now man fuck's sake <laughs> <laughs> can't even let us enjoy christmas <laughs> No, which next? They'll be saying you can't have your turkey. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just it just felt a bit like tacky. So everyone nah, here wanted to go to the Christmas market. I was like, it wasn't even good. We went and did something else, and it was much better. What do you know what I mean? Fucking shagging. No, there. no, we went to we went to a craft fair. It was very a craft sweet. fair. Yeah. How environmentally friendly it thing was. was. Very middle class was. <laughs> I know, it's a, it's a very middle class existence, particularly in Edinburgh. I know. What um do you do over? Christmas, do you go out on Christmas Eve or Christmas night? I mean, I'm no. saying this like as if, like, what did you do, like, in your, particularly in your early 20s or 18, 19, 20, all that kind of stuff? I would never go out on, on uh, Christmas, Christmas Eve. Eve. Would really? you? Yeah, yeah, that was, like, a big thing. Was it? I, everybody for, like, my area, like, we'd all go to the local pub and then we'd go to the, the dancing that was there at the time, like, and everybody go to the local dancing, like, I don't know how many Christmas dinners I ruined. Really? By being hung over. Well, that's what after I After a pure big it. night out. But that was actually one of the pure best nights of the year. Cause was it? Everybody was so up for it. And it was like, everybody you knew everybody if school there. or you, you're working on it, everybody was there. And it was just a pure brilliant night out. And I, it would always be class. So like we'd done that for years. Yeah. But it was like always, but it, you would always 
somebody would always be buying shots and then you would just like the amount of times I woke up and like you know you open my presents go straight back to bed and then forced in my Christmas dinner afterwards oh, and stuff man. but it was genuinely class like it was so good just Christmas Eve like it was a big night and it was because like the pub that's what they all do like you just go to your local pub but all of a sudden you need to buy a ticket and it's like have you got a ticket for Christmas Eve and all that <laughs> like, it's a pure big deal and then, like, and then you go to the boot, like, you go to like the, the dancing afterwards and then like um I and then that again that's maybe a night where you'd go out oh maybe I can hook up with somebody but I would say though Christmas Eve yeah is without doubt the hardest night of the year to pull yeah because like who's really going to be wanting to like wake up on Christmas Day in someone else's house particularly when you're like younger and all that where you're going to need to like shuffle down the stairs like walk by this person's family as they're all their own. presents <laughs> and then like and their stockings and they're all like mum who's this <laughs> it's Santa? like tiny Tim's like oh, <laughs> who are you are you the ghost of Christmas present <laughs> and then you need to go back to your own house and they all know you've been a dirty stopper the Have night before Have you ever before. done that? No but Surely it's impossible I don't think it's impossible Is that a challenge? It's rarely been done <laughs> There's been a few times, probably over, I can't even really remember too much, but I remember nights where, like, you know, you'd be getting off with somebody or whatever yeah. on Christmas Eve and you're like, there's no way. No. This is, I think the closest it came is that I get a taxi back with somebody. Yeah. And then it was like, is this going to happen or no? And it dropped off. And then in the morning, I'd be like, oh, thank God, that would have been so embarrassing. So <laughs> like, embarrassing. I'd woke up, there was somebody in the oh house. Oh my God, just like. You introduced her to my mom on that Christmas day, like, <laughs> fuck that. <laughs> But uh, no, it's definitely hardest night of the year to pull for I sure. I mean, you wouldn't want that. The ideal would be, I mean, what sounds like is good about that. So I wouldn't do that because I love Christmas Day uh-huh. and I wouldn't want to ruin it because I am so bad on a hangover. Like I am miserable. So, so what do you do on Christmas Eve? Christmas Eve, I stay in. I lay out my carrots and milk for it's santa claus for santa claus to come yeah that's funny do you know my cousin mick when he's he's in australia but he see he would never come out on christmas eve yeah but he would just wise. Sit, but he would just sit in the house and like yeah. and like but his mum my like man he used to always like say my mum's but like it's like i don't know he just sits now he doesn't go i don't know why he's not just gonna and like we'd always like oh you come along at the pub mick now he just would he would just sit but he wouldn't even do anything and then like it's not as if they had like a big Christmas day or anything, really. Oh, like, really? Just it was just like, the, like his mum, stepdad, and bra. I like, thought you were going to say his mum was the one coming out. <laughs> she probably would be more up for it, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> but what sounds good about that, right, which I don't really have... I feel like my friends don't have that kind of thing of going out on Christmas Eve, Aye. or I would actually probably go because I have real FOMO. Um, but I well, feel that like... that was actually why... That's you, why you'd go. Because for years, probably, you kept, you kept going out after you knew it probably wasn't even worth it. Yeah. But you were, like, trying to relive the past years and you'd get the FOMO of like oh I don't want to miss Christmas Eve and all yeah. that stuff actually I went out on Christmas Day I just remembered this uh-huh. and basically it was like me and my cousins uh, and I was at my cousins for Christmas Day and she was a bit older and she was like all oh, um, me and all my friends are going to the garage Aye. and uh, so I went to the garage on Christmas Day because every because all the adults were asleep and I felt like we'd kind of had Christmas yeah. you know what I mean and I was like well fuck it I'm like quite awake and it'll be fun and like her older pals were like I thought oh maybe I can get in with them or whatever Aye. so I went and I was wearing like um heels and they had you know like when you open a cardboard box and it's got like the white little things Aye. what's that called i don't know the little white things um and basically the entire like it's a massive massive like dance floor polystyrene polystyrene mm-hmm. like white things yeah. and it was just covered in polystyrene white things to look like snow but oh it was God. like disgusting because you'd be walking around <laughs> it's the worst idea <laughs> <I've ever heard. laughs> I know. and everyone's like decking it because they're wearing heels and it's actually really like thick and then there'd be like little puddles of like like spilt drinks mm. or like maybe a bit of like whitey like a bit of puke click on like bit of mm. like purple and i remember being like this is so bleak that yeah. this is christmas day and we're all spending it at that yeah. well it's interesting you talk about people decking it because our next mm? submission uh is about that very topic so let's have a listen so i was on a wee mid-december tinder date in town uh, things were going well and we we're walking through royal exchange square hand in hand and the Christmas lights overhead were adding a bit of romance. So we were heading to the train station and she started walking in the wrong direction. So I gave her hand a kind of playful tug in the right direction. Mm-hmm. And she proceeded to go right up my arse so nice. <laughs> now, as if this wasn't bad enough, all the Christmas shop traffic sat in Queen Street saw it and started beating their horns at her. 
So she didn't <laughs> speak to me the rest of the way to the train station or ever again. Oh, oh my man. god, that's harsh. That is harsh. <laughs> <laughs> I know it wasn't his fault. He really. really shouldn't have done the tug. That is yeah. That is so awkward. Though, like, could you imagine? Oh, uh, I, I mean, because he must feel terrible. Because like he's when to do it. He's trying to like do it in a helpful way. A helpful way. And then it's like just led to this absolute disaster. I hate when people like you know if you like smash a glass and everyone's like way. I hate that, and it sounds like that's what they've done. There. Aye, that's what the taxi drivers were doing. Beeping exactly. and all that. I know, just like I, that's that is the absolute worst. Like, but don't you think? But don't you think you could just? She should have just had that conversation and been like, "That was really embarrassing." Unless they thought they were beeping at him, like, "Oh, like they've just seen a guy basically <laughs> fucking Pull throw a woman in the ground." Like, what did you say? A playful tug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've all had a playful tug in our time tug in our thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> well he certainly never got one that night that's for sure <laughs> that, um, oh that has got no like especially if it was going well and he actually did like her and I know that led to him maybe it was a good back. excuse for her to be like maybe she wasn't feeling it maybe she wasn't making a mistake maybe she's just trying to get away from him she was actually going the right <laughs> he's like, direction he's like come back and she's like no and slipped nice maybe I suppose that is the dangers of like you know dating around this time of year because like this thing with winter dates like you know and the, people talk about Christmas yeah. markets and all that and people like romanticise oh it's Christmas it'll be romantic and stuff but the reality is it's cold yeah. it's bleak it's dark yeah. I do kind of, you know, it being dark, I think dating at night obviously is better. Like, yeah. just it's a wee bit more dating the vibes. in autumn and winter is the best, I think. Do you think so? Yeah, 100%. Why? Because I just feel like it being dark, you want to like get cozy, you want to have like a kind of courier and like a date with like, do you know what I mean? Like, this cuffing season, fi- as we've cuffing spoke season. About before. yeah, where you kind of want to like, or m- maybe I like it more because I feel like maybe everyone who's out and like shagging about is it's kind of like easier in the hotter weather. Yeah. Whereas I think people are a bit more kind of like cozy and like maybe more likely to want to be a bit more intimate and have like more of a genuine connection in those times. Yeah. I know, I guess so, like, because, I don't know, there is something about the summer as well where everybody's out and, you know, everybody's flashing a bit of the flesh and all that sort of stuff. I but I don't like that because I don't like being too hot and I feel like if you go on a date and you feel too hot, I feel like that's so distracting and a bit gross. Yeah. Whereas, do you know what I mean? That's true, it's awkward, like, you you know. Because you don't find that when you went to Australia. Uh, Aye, but then I guess a lot of times, like, obviously you're still going out at night to meet people and stuff yeah, so, so it's, it's hotter but it's not yeah. like 40 degrees at oh, night man. do you know what I mean when I went to Indonesia with my friend it was so humid and so hot so my hair went massive mm-hmm. and like we went to Bali so it was very like honeymoon and couples and Aye. there was all these weddings and all that so I was there with my friend and uh, I just remember thinking I do I would hate to be with a partner here because my hair was disgusting. I was like sweating every day. I'd like come back and just have to like strip off and just like lie on the bed mm-hmm. completely naked, like proper sweating and disgusting. I was like, how can anyone either go on dates or be like shagging in this weather? It was like horrific. It's like fucking big ram yoga or some shit. Yeah, <laughs> don't want that kind of workout. <laughs> I know. But so you would say, so the ideal scenario is like, obviously with the cuffing season thing yeah. get in the relationship get in the relationship ideally in like what the autumn autumn go to the christmas markets christmas markets ha- don't feel like a single spare prick over christmas and new year mm-hmm. kiss ha- at new year would kiss, be nice kiss at new year with somebody you're with yeah absolutely so you don't have that awkward thing yeah and then get to valentine's day get a nice present yeah and then about march april time you're thinking bye bye see you later <laughs> Hot girl summer. <laughs> Hot girl summer. Do you know my flatmate was raging at me for not having, well, not actually raging, but she was like so buzzing for hot girl summer. And then I got a boyfriend in May and she was like, oh man. Like, well, she wasn't the only listener to the podcast who was disappointed <laughs> that you've uh, abandoned them. And not the abandoned. I'm just doing market research singledom. for being happy in a relationship. I think it's actually quite good to have that perspective now. And actually, we'll move on, I think, to. Um, to talking about some Christmassy stuff that is more related to relationships and stuff. So we basically got like a couple of submissions in and it was one one of them was about like kinda like meeting parents and stuff and the other mm-hmm. ones but yeah so we'll have a, a wee listen and see what this first one is um in terms of being in a relationship yes. in the Christmas holidays. And of course obviously Rachel for you 
it's your first Christmas in a relationship with yeah. your current partner and <laughs> my long term partner. Your long term, you. your long term partner. Oh, well, to be fair, you've been with him longer than you lived in Australia, <laughs> if you can remember that far back. I mean, she was there for like six weeks or whatever. <laughs> uh, but anyway, right, so we'll have a listen to this um, one about uh, being in a relationship during the holidays. So my Christmas dating story is that one year when I was dating this guy, I went to meet his family for the first time and it was around about Christmas and we went for dinner and over the dinner, I could kind of tell that his mum really didn't like me and she didn't really address me until maybe about like 20 minutes after meeting her initially. And the first two occasions that she addressed me, she called me by a different name and everyone had to correct her. And I was a little bit flustered and I was like, oh, it's okay. I mean, the name didn't sound anything like my name. Later on, I found out that the name she was calling me was my boyfriend at the time's ex-girlfriend's name. So clearly she missed her. Oh, that's so shit. That's so horrible. Yeah. Do you think? Yeah, and you know that that was not... It was on purpose, clearly. Yeah. That's so bad. Do you know, mums are scary. I'm scared of I'm scared of mums. And I feel like everyone makes out this thing about the dad. I think it's the mum. Well, I think it's the mum for the woman and it's the dad for the guy, really. Well, it's no. It's the scary one. Nah, I disagree. Well, but... here's, here's my okay. take on it. Well, because mu- that definitely is like on purpose. That is a sign of like passive aggression and yeah. like mums are like the undefeated champs of passive aggressiveness yes. <laughs> really and like yeah that thing of like not acknowledging for 20 minutes by the way is like really rude especially when you're in their house yes. like that's almost like it almost be you need to go out your way to ignore someone that exactly. time they're in your house and secondly um yeah the, the calling by the name thing and all that it's just really like it's just awkward and, and that sort of stuff but like i think that that's like stuff that like, I, I guess, like, mums would do to like, other women and stuff like that. See if it was a, a guy in the house. I, don't, I just don't think they would do that in the same way. Yeah. And also, like, I don't know, like, I, I, maybe I wouldn't even pick up on it, but because that's the, the mum shit. It's, like, the passive-aggressive stuff. And, like, yeah. that's the awkwardness sometimes between, like, a mother-in-law and, a you know, the kind of partner of the son yeah. or maybe the mum and daughter or something yeah. like that. Whereas with dads and guys... The things more like the the classic like that you're always kind of expecting is like what's your intention, son? Like a proper so like shit. it's it's more on, again it's like that more on the surface stuff of like they'll just try and like make shitty jokes to you or try and like put you down or like yeah. obviously because it's the 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 dads are insecure and they but, but they do it in a kind of di- more direct that way that their daughter is having sex yeah basically which that, is so fucking bad yeah and like going like what are you all about, son, and all that kind of yeah. stuff, and, like, I'm going to rough you up a wee bit, yeah. like, because, I, like, that's, I, I don't know, I just think that's such a weird thing, and I think it comes from people, and I think, like, why wouldn't you just be nice to somebody? Yeah. Like, because they're, you know, if, you know, you're part, like, obviously you want to be, people are just overprotective and stuff like There's that. There's also degree. outdated thinking. And Absolutely. It, and it feels very much like, it's like that kind of patriarchy thing of being, Aye. like, coming back to like weddings and the dad giving away the daughter to the ma- to the groom basically Aye. and it's that similar thing of being like oh are you going to have sex with my daughter and it's like well everyone's having sex with everyone do you know what I mean yeah. in terms of relationships so why are we focusing in on the daughter and the dad and it's obviously because they're uncomfortable Aye. with that whereas if it's the the boy bringing back a lastie the dad's like thanks for doing him a favour <laughs> <laughs> look after me can he cook Aye. which is why I'm saying so I think it, it, yeah. it's kind of different the other way about but you think it would well be... my dad's not like that so my dad's very much like my dad has a really bad memory so to be honest he doesn't remember most of my friends names he, he like knows who they are but do you know what I mean and he's very kind of easy going and if I can just be like uh-huh. listen like this is this is this and he's just like okay and he's just very kind of quiet and like let's make it on Aye. whereas it's my mum you need to impress. So, yeah. like, if my mum, like, me and my mum have big, long conversations about things, she'd be the one to be like, listen, don't think they're for you or whatever. So she's very warm and very friendly, but I definitely think that it's it's my mum that you need to get on side. But would you, like, obviously uh, your mum is a nice person. She would, she would need to do something like that. Yeah. But do you think, like, it would be different? So, like, if your mum... How would your mum react if she didn't like somebody you were dating that she met? Uh, she would... 
I think she wouldn't say anything. She might say the odd little thing that would make me question. But not that. when not when they're there. No, no, not when they're ne- they'd, there. They'd nice. But she'd do it to me, and that'd be even worse because I'd be like, "Oh God, I want you to like them Aye. or whatever." How do you think your mum would be different? Say you dated women, or yeah. you know, you were a guy and dated women, or something like that. Yeah. Like, eh, uh, I mean, either or, basically. But, yes. Eh, but how do you think that would be different? Like, because, you what, know... What do you think, she, as in, do you think she would be... The same way that in that clip, because yeah. it was the, the boy bringing back a girl. Yeah. And it's just that sort of woman... Woman thing. Well, do you know thing? what I've found is, like, working in the bar is when there's... Because it sounds like the issue is with the mum. The mum oh, is the, it, the complete the issue. Aye. And I think it's that kind of thing of, like... And I think there's an element of... See, when I'm working in the bar and there's, like, an older woman and they're quite rude and I find that they're specifically rude to me Aye. rather than the guy that I'm working with. And it's almost like... Is there an element of, like, oh, there's that young young girl and she's swanning about and she thinks she's great. I'm going to yeah. knock her down a peg or two because I've experienced life and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And do you think it's just because they're, like... They feel insecure that they're not the young thing anymore maybe i don't know or maybe i think there's such a thing of just being like i've experienced life and you and i've had a harder life and i deserve brilliant service or whatever i remember i used to have that one of the worst managers ever had in my work and she said to me one time she went i've seen it all and done it all and i was like you have clearly done fuck all (laughs) (laughs) you've seen the fuck all and you've done fuck all there is no way yeah what have you done like you went to dubai that's it probably (laughs) you know what i mean like you're managing a call center what have you done and seen how are you here how are you here you haven't seen it you're on the fucking phone absolutely you know and you've not done anything i mean you've barely done any work since i've worked here but (laughs) no but that's that's interesting whereas my um my ex-boyfriend's mum she used to just call me honey because apparently he had so many girlfriends that she was scared about getting the name wrong. That's quite a good <laughs> tactic. It's uh, good and it's actually nice as well. But remember when she told me that, she was like, oh, there was a point where he just had a new girlfriend every week. And I was like, it was quite early on. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> he told me he was a virgin. <laughs> I was going to ask you, so have, have you met your partner's no. parents yet? So oh, my partner, I love it. Very grown up. What can I say? Uh, my partner, yeah. So your no. wee boyfriend. No, we, your wee man. <laughs> your wee fancy lad. <laughs> oh, I worked with this lovely Irish guy, and he was like, he met him, and he was like, "Oh, your man." And I was like, "Oh, that's so nice." The first time anyone said it. I believe um, say that about anyone. I know your man. Uh, you know your man from up the road there. <laughs> I've got a lot of boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I haven't met his mum. Uh, but actually, so we're so I'm going to Christmas at my, my parents, and he's going to Christmas at his mum's up mm. north. Um, but we're gonna go away on a wee holiday up north and have a couple of days in a little cottage because I said I wanted to like have a fire and all that kind of stuff. So it's very sweet. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he just booked that, and then we're gonna have New Year, and I'm gonna meet his mum then. But I'm quite nervous about it because it's one of those things where I. I think that I can I can come across as like nice and warm, but it's like that thing with that submission is it's like it's actually nothing to do with that girl. So do you know what I mean? Like sometimes you can be like, oh well, like because mom's like, oh people like you, like what's not to like? And I'm like, not everyone likes me, mom. And also there's other things at play, isn't there? So yeah, well it's basically like it takes two to tango. Yes. And if she's not willing to be yeah, you know, accommodating and nice yeah. back to you yeah, then. It doesn't really, if she just decides, and often that is maybe just because it's like, because I guess it's that weird thing mm. of like, like, I guess some mums will have for their sons. It's like, yeah. you know, you're taking them away from me, like this I know, weird psychological think, Freudian thing I, or something. I know. Well, I feel good about it because I think he's so lovely and nice Aye. and like polite and well brought up. So I feel like she'll be really nice. I can't imagine it can't being imagine any other it. way. But also I think that like he's an adult man as well. It's not like it's in Aye. the times where it's like, oh, spending all your time with them yeah 100 um so yeah no i think it's i think it'll be i think it'll be fine and also uh, see when we had our first yeah when we had our first date and he he uh, came through to glasgow and got the train through and Aye. then we had the day out and then um he like kept missing all his trains and he actually missed the last train uh, so he had to get like the mega bus back to edinburgh on our first date and uh, like a couple of weeks. God, bad to bad to us, eh? Uh, 
<laughs> I know. Well, he never told me as well. He had to get like a taxi. I wouldn't be telling anyone that I was dating that get the mega bus. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was too late to get the train. So yeah. then, so basically, he like he had to get that home or whatever. And then a couple of weeks later, we became like Facebook official. And he hadn't like we hadn't really told many people, and he hadn't told his mum. So he just his mum just saw it on Facebook that he was in a relationship type thing, and she texted him like oh i knew it you don't you don't miss the last train home from glasgow for nothing so happy for you <laughs> oh that's nice it's that nice, sounds like it? a nice reaction yeah doesn't it why is everybody in facebook finding out before me that's that's <laughs> what i would begin probably but that's interesting yeah so oh that's good, good. Well, well hopefully that goes away i'm sure it'll be fine but I big know. pressure well well, I look forward to hearing about that. I in know. Because I, I suppose that's the thing when you go, you start getting out with somebody, you don't realise, like, you're not just going out with them, you're kind of taking on their family as well, exactly. aren't you? Exactly. And I feel like, so he's met my family just because Glasgow's he's, closer about, and aye, aye. all that kind of stuff. But my mum was very keen to meet him to the point where she kept on bringing up the fact that she'd not met him and it became like a bit of a pressure where I was a bit kind of like I think she just wanted to kind of know what he was like obviously because it'd been a while since I've been in a relationship and obviously I spent so much time with him and I was like raving about how great he is and all this kind of stuff so she really wanted to meet him what about your dad? pressure oh my dad's just there he do you know really what I mean? he's just happy he's plodding along you know? <laughs> he's plodding along in the kitchen with yeah. the slippers on just living life that's the two kind of dads isn't it really dads that are just like just plodding along and don't really just ah, do what you want and then the dad's all like what's your intention exactly <laughs> under my roof with my dog <laughs> that's the two types of dads so yeah. I think we both got the first kind <laughs> yes just like really happy to be there just all right yeah. is that what you're doing cool yeah Fine, that was cool. that's what you want isn't it really <laughs> <laughs> so we'll move on to the next submission we've got which is also to do with like when you're in a relationship and stuff like that and this is about kind of gifts my favorite festive dating story was my ex about five years ago and um, we'd been going out for a year by that point and we didn't spend christmas together because i didn't want to um, and he gave me my Christmas present to open with my parents and I thought this is lovely, we've been together for a year, it's going to be something lovely, something thoughtful. Imagine it was a dildo. <laughs> Given me a Where's the Wiki book, which is like Where's Wally but you're looking for a wiki, um, and a Harry Potter mindfulness colouring in book and a Doctor Who TARDIS tea strainer. Um, the relationship didn't last very long after that but that's got to be the worst thing I've ever been given by a boyfriend. And it wasn't like we were like 15. I was 28 and he was in his 30s and that was what he thought was an acceptable gift. So yeah, um, I don't have a lot of luck at Christmas with men. I'm not being funny, right? I wouldn't mind those presents. That's because you're a geek. Well, that's what I've realised in <laughs> recent years. I used to always end up with geeky guys and I'd be like, how strange, because I'm really fucking cool and I'm I'm always with these geeky guys. But it's because I'm a bit of a geek too. No, yeah. I understand that now. And do you know what's funny? I was speaking to my boyfriend and uh, I was saying to him, like, what did you think of me when you first started listening to the podcast? And he was like, oh. Met on the podcast, with him, if you don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so he like he'd like listened or and obviously we hadn't met and he'd like mm -hmm. listened to us. I was like, what what was your first impression of me? And he was like, oh, I thought you were quite cool. And I was like, oh okay. You couldn't have listened to that many episodes. Well, I know. Videos. And then I went, when did you realise that I wasn't? He went a couple of episodes in. <laughs> 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 no, a couple of dates in actually, oh, which is it? fair enough. A couple fair of enough. dates in, and then in my head I went, I know exactly the date that it would yeah, be. Yeah. So if you're wondering, well, you peek behind the curtain, you know, she presents this cool demeanour on the podcast, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know the facade really falls hey, I'm a and cool you city girl I was out shagging about do you know what I mean I guess so that's the vibe but I think the thing for that with that submission for me is like so if he's given her something for Star Wars Doctor Who and Lord of the Rings was so it so it feels like it's a reflection on what he thinks she is I, right like, like cause she's no man like what if she's just into all the things and then she's like oh it's so weird that but I've got she this. must like, have not been into those things to not, not like it and also a year is quite a long time so me and my boyfriend have been going out for 10 months which feel it, but it feels like it's been a really long time but maybe that's I mean, just been banging on about it oh, so much no. it feels like any excuse, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> Have I mentioned? Um, but like, I, you would expect a bit more, surely, as a present. Do you know what I mean? That's three quite like small things. Do you know what I mean? You'd want something a bit more thoughtful. Mm -hmm. I think you that's what it is. haven't been going out for 10 months, by the way. Yeah. It's December. And yeah. we, so what, when did you April, meet? April, May. That's not 10 months. What is it? 
ten eight ten months. months you'd have been going out in February. What is it? Eight months. It's certainly not ten. <laughs> what is it then? Seven or eight. Okay, well, like eight months. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you trying to make out as though I'm you've been in exactly. a relationship longer than you have been? I genuinely thought it was about ten months. No, think about how many months. Right, okay, understand. Okay, <laughs> I find maths really hard. God, um, apparently so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, eight months. Yeah. Mm, okay. Fine. Let's call that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we'll be liberal with the truth. But yeah. they are. They are. I'd say they're quite minimal. Minimal gifts. Those ones. That's I, surely the issue. Also, it'd be gotten if he was actually just into all that stuff. And he's like, right, I'm really going to reveal. Oh, and she that was in... a big Doctor Who head and all that stuff. Yeah. And then she's like, what is this man? Weirdo. It's real geeky vibes, and she must not be into the geeky stuff. Which is a bit insulting if you're not. It does sort of sound like the stuff that would all be in the one shop and maybe just left it too late and then, you know. Yeah, I can think of that exact shop. But also, like, the fact that he gave her it to open in front of her parents, like, that's, yeah. like, quite a big deal. And then, yeah. like, she's not only got the embarrassment of opening it and not liking it, but they, they're they like, oh, is that what you got you? And, like, they're, everybody's a bit like, oh, that's, like, not amazing. But, yeah. I don't know. Have you ever had any, like, terrible gifts given to you or have you gave anyone any terrible gifts no i feel like i'm good i'm maybe good at giving gifts what about receiving uh do you know i feel bad well just i feel like i feel like my ex-boyfriend didn't really have like very we didn't have very similar tastes and i feel like he got he would get me like expense not expensive jewelry but he got me like jewelry but I really didn't like it. So wasn't it really, your taste. It wasn't my taste. Whereas I feel like my boyfriend now, like he, he'll he get me like presents every now and again, which is really nice. You know, we were chatting about love languages or whatever. Like he got me earrings for like no reason the other day. And I was like, that's so nice. Turns out your love language is gift giving after Number all, Number one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so he'll, and he, I feel like he has really good taste and we have very similar like yeah really similar taste so i feel like he'll get me like really good stuff whereas mm -hmm. my ex-boyfriend we just had i think he just yeah we just he just didn't really have it was sort of like because that sounds to me like the sort of thing that like particularly when you're younger you go right this is like a girlfriend gift like earrings or yeah. a necklace or something like that and you go right i'm going and it maybe even be quite expensive by the sounds of it but yeah. it's just no quite what you would wear well he got me like a necklace that was like in the shape of a flower but it was like black it was like a kind of Faux crystal, oh, right, but it was black and like, it was in the shape of flower. It sounds like the crown of thorns Jesus would wear or some what shit like that. What can I say? I am, yeah. Is that I am your what idol. Is? Is that uh, what it is? No, no, no. It was like a, it was like a chain, and then at the bottom it was a little pendant. Oh, right, okay. And it's like, but it was like black, and I was like. I don't understand the thought process. And then you feel bad because it's expensive and all this kind of stuff. And he would spend quite a lot of money and yeah. felt a wee bit bad about it. But yeah. I mean, there's such, so much pressure. Like I'm very aware of like what I'm getting my boyfriend for Christmas. Like I've been, I've been trying to like really listen out for things that he'd want. And the other day he was like, I just don't really like stuff. And I was like, you don't like stuff. Hard to buy for. Hard, very hard to buy. The pits may have hard to buy for if you don't like stuff. Aye, I bet you a lot of guys are like that. I would imagine. I bet you loads of people, like girlfriends, find it hard to buy stuff for guys because a they lot don't of guys want, don't want clutter. He's very yeah. like he's very he likes his room being very like neat and tidy and all that kind of stuff. So I just don't want to add anything that like will clutter up and he'll not want. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Um. But like I've got him, like I got him like a little kind of thing. Are you allowed to say on the podcast? Well, no, this is before that I've given oh, right, him. Aye, aye. Uh, I wouldn't say what I got him, but okay. uh, I'm still to get stuff. I'm really hard. Oh my god! What? We are recording this on the 24th of December, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, like I've got a few things. I don't think he's got anything for me. So the yeah. other day, I think he was saying that he was stressed, and we were walking about, and I was doing a lot of obvious hinting of like trying on stuff I and mean, being like i really like this but i would like it in like i think i'd like it in this color or oh, maybe i'll leave this and da, 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 or oh, i don't really wear that because i just lose it and all this kind of stuff i could imagine you taking your boyfriend out going christmas shopping and then actually getting the stuff like that you want him to buy you while you're with him yep, and getting so him to wrap it and all that sort of stuff <laughs> and then just go right take that away and give me that on Christmas day no. and it'll be so romantic and no. I can imagine you coordinating no, it all because I love the surprise I lo love a thoughtful surprise mm -hmm. so do you know what like he'll be stressing about what to get me I really don't mind what he gets me as long as it's something as long as it's a surprise and as long as it's something that I feel like has some sort of 
thoughtfulness behind it, but I'm not all about like give me loads of money. Do you think he's going to propose? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> no fucking way. <laughs> what do you think of the the Christmas proposal? Shit! Why would you want it? I love a celebration, and I love like. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I would. I'm so glad I don't have a December birthday because I love my birthday. Aye. And I feel like if you're gonna go for the whole wedding and all that kind of stuff, I think why would you choose a day that already is getting used up for Christmas? Do you know what I mean? Whereas you could like have another date like say someone proposed in like june you could be like oh this is the day they proposed and it's dead nice do you know what i mean i guess it's maybe two factors come into it yeah one is just not knowing what else to get them <laughs> like oh i think they don't want a ring but two do you know how it's like that people must just feel that pressure yeah so if you get to a certain point where all your pals and yeah. like your partner's pals and all that are getting married and it's coming up to christmas and like it's maybe almost expected and it's yeah. like if you don't do it then when are you going to do it kind of thing that's true but it does seem like just because so many people do it it takes a wee bit of the specialness away doesn't it i think that i wouldn't like that also i'm very aware i've been i think i'm getting to an age where more people that i know are like proposing and all that kind of stuff whereas i'm quite far away from that do you know what i mean like i feel that's what you think well 24th december (laughs) here's hoping (laughs) no i'm kidding i also feel like you know i feel very like comfortable in this relationship that like i feel like i see him as being like my partner for a long time so i don't like i don't need to think about all that stuff for like quite a wee while do you know what i mean i because sometimes like I do, I, you know, maybe this is too cynical of me, but I sometimes do think when somebody gets married, particularly if it's not, like, or gets engaged, when it's not like the, maybe not necessarily the best relationship in the world, or mm-hmm. maybe they try to paper over the cracks of the problems they're having with, with it, or, you know, especially maybe if they've been fighting and all that sort of stuff, yeah. and it's like, oh, well, proposing and thingy, or maybe yeah. they just get bored and they're like, well, what else are we going to do now? Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of people might be doing that. And I, I feel like the Christmas one, you see a lot more people doing it when they're in those types of relationships. Whereas yeah. m- maybe if someone's in more of a healthy relationship, it's more like, oh, they'll do it, you know, when they're on a nice holiday or in some sort of more kind of occasion. In it's a, a wee bit more personal. Way and yeah. yeah, and it feels, yeah, I think, I, I very much think with marriage and proposals and all that stuff, like it needs to be not about the wedding. It needs to be about the marriage. Do you know what I mean? So there's some people who you feel like they're so focused on it being a real beautiful wedding and so much expense and every every little thing. And you think this is just about the day. It's not about like, and and also my, so my cousin used to work at weddings and she used to, she's quite cynical and she's funny with it, but she's just very much like, she's like, I've seen every wedding. She's like, I've seen every single one. She's like, I've seen lots of variations, but it's just everyone celebrating it, their love in exactly the same way or a variation of exactly the same way. And yeah. I think like, I mean, I really like the idea of it, but I think it need it needs to be about actually just wanting to like consolidate things. And, and like, I think it needs to be about just being like, this is just confirmation that we want to be together forever rather right. than being like, look how in love we are, guys. Hey, look. Look how, look how much money I'm worth of look how much he loves me look in this ring and that's yeah. how much I'm worth and I, I think no because there's I think the difference is because you can have ones that they've maybe even spent a lot of money on and stuff like that but if the couple if everybody knows the couple are really in love and they're yeah. right for each other oh then it's beautiful and it's lovely it's nice then it's good and it, you know they can spend you know as much or as little as they want yeah and people still have a good day and like, you know, there's a good vibe but yeah. I feel like if it's a wedding where you know it's people don't really think they're right for each other and maybe the grooms you know <clears throat> pals don't like her and her pals don't like him and all that kind of stuff yeah. or even just you know they just shouldn't be together or whatever yeah. it is like and even you know it doesn't matter how much money it's always just everybody's kind of a bit, a bit like up at the back of the room going like you know it's a lot of shit you know like it's kind of like a weird vibe so i think it definitely depends on just the nature of the relationship yeah. doesn't it whereas it can be really love but do you know what i've been noticing about when I'm seeing lots of people getting proposed to mm-hmm. is I feel like they know. I feel like they Aye. must know because they always have their nails done. And I'm thinking <laughs> I wouldn't, I'd be the type of person that wouldn't have my nails done. And I think, I just feel like they must know. They must yeah. sense it. There's no spontaneousness because like, yeah. if you just proposed to someone and they didn't have their nails done, they'd be so raging, they would make you know, do it and do it again <laughs> and that sort of stuff. I, everything's so manufactured these days, isn't it? It's like, oh, if you're... And also, who's taking these proposal photos? That's what I want to know. That is what In I want to know. In these beautiful, like, beautiful settings, I'm just like, who's taking this? Well, 
a mammy and Nick who you obviously know as well, him and his uh, partner Amy got engaged recently and they were in this lovely holiday in Italy. So nice. And was I was not Switzerland. Eh, no, 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 it was in okay, Italy, sorry. but it was this beautiful, beautiful place. And, Mountain. But the thing is, he's a, he, like, is a filmmaker. Yeah. So he had all this stuff and he was, like, setting it up as though he was just, I'm going to just get a shot of these hills and that. And then got down and then he and took and they've got the <gasps> most beautiful photo. Do you know what? Great that is beautiful. Gone. Yeah, I mean, if you're a filmmaker, Aye. that's amazing. Yeah. Oh, do you know that? But maybe really at nice. some point when she's you know ruffling a bit in the pocket, <laughs> trying to look for the ring, it's like yeah, uh, fucking. You better be fucking setting this up for this proposal. That's what I'm going to say. I just think yeah, that's really nice, and there that picture is so gorgeous. It's lovely. Um, I feel like I mean, my parents they never had like a proposal. Like my dad just you've told yeah, this story before. Yeah. Right? yeah, but then they just were like, oh, let's just get married. I think I'd like the proposal proposal but i'm i would be happy for it to be a really like spontaneous joyous moment i feel like when it becomes really like overthought up it's just a bit like false not false our friend that friend one is like really lovely and yeah. nice but do you know when it's that kind of thing of being like it's like the christmas day ones yeah. well maybe maybe your partner <laughs> will maybe uh, you know no, not have thought of anything to get no, you do you know what we're very much in love but like jingle all the way that toy that you're wanting you know you can't jingle. get the last one <laughs> and then he's like oh, i'll just need to propose instead so we'll oh, see what happens <laughs> Nah, do you know what? I feel very much in love and very comfortable in a relationship. I'm not I'm not pushing for anything. Okay, well, maybe there'll be a wee Christmas miracle. Oh, shut That's up. <laughs> and in the spirit of Christmas, we're going to listen to the last submission yes. that we've got, which involves a very Christmassy themed, at least the names, I would say. So this is a good old-fashioned Christmas tale about a one-night stand. One year I was working over Christmas so I couldn't go home to my folks and ended up at this Waifs and Strays Christmas orphan party oh. where lots of people were in the same position. I'm not real ended up meeting I'm not really <laughs> He was really <laughs> handsome, he was like, I can't remember, like a scaffolder and part-time model, really fit and we end up going back to mine. And as a lapsed Catholic, I quite enjoyed the fact that his name was Joseph going home together on Christmas night. I thought that was quite beautiful. Um, so we get back to mine and, you know, get to doing the business. And obviously I go and get a condom, you know, everything all fine. And then the next day, um, <laughs> next morning, on St. Stephen's Day, Boxing Day, we kind of wake up and start going uh, things again and again I got up and go and get a condom and he was like oh and I was like, well, what's wrong what's wrong Joseph and he was like oh I, I thought um since we used one last night maybe we didn't have to today so at Christmas time I often think about Joseph and wonder if he's had his own immaculate conception so so shit that he's trying to get away with that I believe we have just solved the mystery of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> then they got in a time machine and went back. Yeah. Oh, no. man. I know. It's weird that he... Why would you think that you wouldn't need to use one? I know. Like, there was a difference. Or is it like Christmas treat? Come on. I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what she was saying. There's no room in this in anyway, that's for sure. <laughs> unless you're... <laughs> Unless you're bringing your own frankincense and myrrh-shaped condoms. Well. Do you know when you were saying about like waifs and strays and orphans? Because uh -huh. I was just thinking of like all the kids and Oliver <laughs> just opening yeah. the door and they're like, ah. I thought she just meant like, know how that way like folk will have like... A hundred percent. I knew it wasn't real orphans. Like friends. Oh, but... maybe, maybe they actually, I don't really know. But well, like they, I guess if it's just like, you know, you're no you've not got home somewhere for the holidays, you go, it's like Friendsmas or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I would hate that though. Like I know a lot of people who've like moved to Australia and obviously Obviously, it's like yeah. say, like hot, and mm -hmm. they'll like maybe have a barbecue, and it's all their pals. I just really, I really like that it's like a family time of year and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but maybe it's just because I'm not adventurous. Maybe, maybe so, but I don't know. I think uh, certainly sounds like they had a good night. I know, <laughs> <laughs> not the morning so much, but uh... I know it's really good. Do you know, like. If you're having a, a night out and it's like that time of year, it mm -hmm. does it does feel a bit more special. Like, Aye. do you remember we went to that Christmas party and it was our friend's, it was actually our friend's birthday. It was like the 23rd of 
December mm -hmm. and he had made his own alcohol Aye. and made then his own wine. He made his own wine. So but it was so like potent and mm -hmm. everyone was just fucked. Yeah. And then Because it was it was someone described it as honking. Honking. And then someone else said, but it's quality and so it got named honking of quality. <laughs> That's exactly what it was, honking of quality. <laughs> but no, I, I think that's one of the worst hangovers I've ever had after really? that. I, I remember that still. At least you had time to get like better for Christmas Day. I think I had something on though. Like I think no, cause that I think it was maybe the twenty third and then so the big Christmas Eve night was the next night oh, and yeah. that really and snookered me for that. Oh. So but no, that was a uh, yeah, that that was quite the thing because I don't know what he done it, but clearly the whole fermenting process was, was really, not followed. Maybe. Yeah, but you know, I had a real like short lived like I had a thing with that guy that I met. So I met a guy and basically he had very rosy cheeks. So you guys uh -huh. all called him Rosie. Do you remember uh -huh. this? Yeah, and uh, and he was very like blonde. And you said he looked, he had like, someone said he looked like a Nazi farmer. Like he was like proper and with like really rosy cheeks. But yeah. anyway, so like I had such a wee short lived thing with him because that was the 23rd of December. So then that night, I don't even think we kissed. I think maybe we exchanged numbers or something. Uh -huh. And then. Um, Did you give him a kiss on his rosy cheeks? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really cute. <laughs> cheeks uh no so i think we exchanged numbers and then obviously like two days later it was christmas day yeah and he didn't i think he wasn't home i think maybe he was like alone on christmas day Aye. and he was telling me all about it and he was very smart and all this kind of stuff he had a big equation as well i'm sure i've told you about him he had like a massive equation of anyway so he was like on his own on christmas day mm -hmm. and then he was texting me but he was texting me like loads which was fine because it was christmas but then he texted me continued to text me like i'd look away from my phone and he'd like i've texted me like 25 times oh and i remember just being like oh i don't know so i went on a date with him on like the 27th mm -hmm. or something can i just say before you finish that yeah one of the best things is when you do meet somebody just over christmas and you're texting them like see when you're sitting at the christmas dinner table and you feel the text back and you're like oh Oh, I can certainly look forward to I'm going to dig into this turkey and then I'm going to read this message from my new love. It's a wee Christmas present. A wee Christmas present. That's yeah, I know, it is quite nice, isn't so it? He's, so he's went on a date on the 27th. Yeah, and then I had a party at New Year mm -hmm. and uh, you were there, I'm pretty sure. And But it, it just felt very All like... The stars in attendance. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my star studded invitees. Um, but that was really, do you know, uh, New Year's were really fun, like, back in the day because I'd always have that big house party and it was good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I just remember it was like we'd been on one date, but because it was over Christmas, it just felt really sped up. And I felt like I was, like, sitting on his knee and all this stuff. And I remember my friends being like, I think he really likes you. And I felt like it could have turned into something. But because it was so intense and it was so sped up, I just remember feeling really kind of like out of control and obviously like new year and like kissing on hogmanay and the bells and all that kind of stuff it just felt so couple coupley and it's like the only time in my life that i've not wanted that commitment and i don't know why absolutely yeah you just well because again it puts that added pressure on it with christmas and it's like we were saying about it's like valentine's you wouldn't want to go on a date on valentine's day or anything exactly and, you know if you'd never met like it was just like early on sort yeah. of stages so just just too much external pressure isn't there yeah and that type of thing but i would say though christmas day is also good for the same thing as like that birthday DM slide. Yes. Christmas Day is like oh I, I don't Christmas. actually know that like it, it seems weird to DM something but like or you would text somebody that even though text Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas and it's a good way to re engage with somebody if you've maybe not spoke to them for a while. Yeah, but that needs to be done well because I know so many people who are like, Hi, 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 how are you? Hi and you ignore it and then it's like Merry Christmas, hi, <laughs> hi <laughs> I'll try my luck here again. There's been four highs not replied to, but she can't not say Merry Christmas to me back. Here we go. Scrooge. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Young man, what day is it? <laughs> <laughs> but also there's such a chaotic thing, isn't there? The time between Christmas and New Year yeah. where you don't know what day it is mm. and all that kind of stuff. But also I feel like the nights when out everyone can be else a bit more joins mad. you <laughs> and not knowing, and not what, knowing day what day it is. is. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember I had a night out and it was like one like christmas like night out with work people um i just got so drunk like so so drunk uh, -huh. uh that i ended up like getting a guy that i worked with to hold my hand have i told you this no 
Oh. I've seen you in states like that before. <laughs> yeah. So like we were out and it was like there was like people there just so drunk and we'd had we were drinking loads of like tequila rose and sure. patron and all that kind of stuff. A slippery nipple and all that. A slippery nipple, <laughs> what can I say? That's where, where the night started. Soon as, soon as, and soon where the like night ended. ended as well. <laughs> <laughs> no it didn't but it's even more i feel like maybe not more embarrassing but basically this guy um i'd like i don't remember it either right so basically um, like it's always I, worse in your head oh you when you can't remember around. i mean the fear is so bad mm. but i just remember having this night and then i remember thinking i'm gonna have to quit my job because i'm so embarrassed that i just have a complete <laughs> mind blank so i was just like that and then the next time i was working with this guy he was like do you do you remember that night and i was like um well yes but no and he was like do you not remember what you did and i was like no but this is like freaking me out and he was just like i was like oh my god i don't want to know i don't want to know and then i was like how embarrassing is it he was like maybe like a seven and i was like oh for fuck's sake i need to like find out what it was so i was like what was it and he was like um well you just asked me to hold your hand so we were just holding hands for like 10 minutes and I was just like, so basically, and then apparently like he, he like held my hand and just, that was it. Mm. But then like five minutes later, uh, he like put my hand down and I was like, can you hold my hand again? <laughs> Bear in mind, I think that like this guy was a wee bit younger than me. So mm. there, it wasn't like there was scope for anything. Yeah. So it's just embarrassing yeah. that I'm like, please, can you just, can you just hold my hand? That's funny. Can you funny. just hold my hand a little bit longer? That's there are obviously is worse things that can happen. Oh, it's not that you bad. You could have but definitely it's... asked them to hold something that'd be worse. No, but, but I think it's worse that it's a hand because it's a bit more pathetic. It's a wee bit more pathetic, <laughs> and the fact that you had to go in and do it again. I know he's like put it down, being like, "Okay, that should be enough," and I'm like, "No, please." Because that's also like obviously that's came out if you've been working together, and then it's like you know that's when your wee secret feelings come out, and then the hold the hand thing and all that. It's all those wee subtle things that are actually the quite big actually in the well it wasn't it. even secret feelings i think it was just that i was so drunk i was like please can you like look after me type oh, thing right. do you know what i mean well that's different i suppose well but... not in a light i didn't need looked after no. but but it's like that way on the night the christmas night out and i've spoken about this before in terms of work stuff but it's like you know if it's somebody you've maybe been a wee bit flirty or whatever uh-huh. as soon as you even even like the holding of the hand thing yeah. that is then crossing a threshold of like Right, we are. Other this people is, saw this is making it into a yeah. thing. Now. Other people, oh, look at them holding hands now. Oh, they're going like to the shag the night. It's like that. the talk of work. And, yeah, and then if yeah. it doesn't happen, then it's oh, what happened there? Ed? But also, you know? I didn't even remember it. So that's the even worse yeah. bit. Is it was like it was complete news to me. Like yeah. I have no memory and of it. And you've been exposed. Oh God, <laughs> so fucking embarrassing. I that's know. Funny. I know. So you had you had that kind of like like a, a sort of Christmas movie themed uh, interaction well do you know what it was it was last year right, right. and I'm gonna blame lockdown for this don't sure. you feel like when you look back on stuff you're like that definitely happened I feel like there should be a bit of an amnesty That's in lockdown in terms of a lot of the stuff people got up to you know yeah. I'm, I'm not like saying hey let me away with murder here like, no I'm not that, I've done it not done it in illegal but you no. know everybody was probably a wee bit more it's more just like the Desperate. choices you were making. <laughs> Obviously, like all within the rules. But what Aye. I mean is like, just you were like speaking to people that maybe you shouldn't have been speaking to. Aye. That kind of thing. Aye. Do you know what I mean? And I just feel like... I maybe mean, send a couple more DMs than usual when you can't see anyone in real life. Exactly. You're like, there's less to lose. Isn't that so funny that we're talking about that as if it was ages ago and it's just a year ago? It's coming back, baby. <laughs> Omicron is here to stay. 2022 will be back on Zoom for series two. <laughs> Just w- wink into the camera. I know. <laughs> oh god, I hope not. Um, but yes. wouldn't that be depressing? This was like the uh, island. This island when we could be in the, the one the space room. in between two series that we had to be in lockdown for. I know. <laughs> and we're like, how great is this? I know. Uh, I enjoy well. Last. I know. We'll have a look, have a little drink after. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I was speaking to someone that I maybe probably shouldn't have been speaking to, and. Uh, was kind of like chance my luck a wee bit like in the sense yeah. of like hadn't really like considered them romantically um because i maybe sh- yeah it was just not really mm-hmm. the right thing to do um but obviously it was like lockdown and it was very cold and it was like near christmas time and uh, we'd we'd like we were not allowed to do anything so obviously you're going to do more things that you shouldn't do but anyway so i was speaking to this person and they were 
I think we'd had a, a, a running joke about ice cream or something. And then what happened was uh, I was like, oh, are you going to are you going to come to my door with ice cream? Right. So I'm like definitely the one who's like. <laughs> God, that could have been worse. Do you want me to lick your cone? <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> Fucking gross. That is the bit that Rachel definitely said that she's just no, not saying. No, I'm her. classy. <laughs> I'm classy. I'm all about the like very subtle hints that are quite obvious. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm like, are you gonna? I was like, oh, are you gonna turn up to my door and like get me ice cream or whatever? And then he did. So he turned up to my door with with an ice cream, right? Mm-hmm. But he'd also, I think, I'd like made a joke about like the door scene in Love Actually, you know, when he has like the big placards with like yeah. this Christmas and he pulls them out. Famous so I think scene. yeah. So I'd like made that joke and it was Christmas time and blah blah. It was like frosty and cold. So he turns up at my door and he's got ice cream and he's also got like a little notepad and he's like referenced Love Actually and written like in his car, like written the little things and like made a wee joke and did it. But he stood and like did it and like did the Love Actually thing, which was very like sweet and it was like funny and but also it's like a wee bit like it's not it's never the same. And also when people do things like that in real life, it is a bit. Aye, it's, uh, it's, it's, as, as I have said many a time, what is romantic in films is kind of creepy. And it's not life. creepy. No, but it's just a wee bit it's just cringe like, in real life. Yeah, well, it's like one of those things where you either you either find it... Like, I laughed and found it really funny Aye. and liked it at the time. Yeah. But, like, it's quite a big risk to do and quite big for him to do, but also it's on, like, a little shitty notepad yeah. as well. If, he, if you're, like, so into him, that's amazing. Yeah. But if you're a bit like, uh, and then it's a bit like it was just it was just a strange setup. So it's, that bit, was, it's, it's try hard and don't and to to give him his due. It's a bold move. It's a bold move. Give honestly, like applaud him for that. It was Aye. a bold move. And then what we did is we went for a walk and we walked up and we sat and then we saw like a shooting star. And I just remember being like, "This is so magical and romantic," but it's like not with the wrong person. Yeah, like it would have been. Like if it was who you're falling in love with, it was if it was like down the line, it would have been so incredible. And I just thought it was so ironic to like have the most romantic day of my life with someone that was never it was never gonna turn into a thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's quite a tough walk home for him after doing all that and then <laughs> Oh, like it was nice. Like it was a nice day. I don't I didn't, I wasn't like didn't say no to him or anything. Do you know what I mean? Like as in we it was like nice and it felt like open ended. So it wasn't like I was like, I... oh, you did all these nice things for me. Bye. I'm never going to see you again. Although I never saw him again. <laughs> <laughs> so that about covers it for our Christmas special. Thank you so much, guys, for listening or watching or however you're taking this in. I assume it's going to be one of those two. Uh, <laughs> you can't you're in, un- in the cabin with us. Unfortunately, <laughs> you can't taste us just yet. But, uh, <laughs> but next year, go on a date with Mark Jennings. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to send me a wee Merry Christmas and see if I get back to you. <laughs> You're going to have so many Merry Christmases, man. And I'll be like that filtering it like, thanks so much from Rachel. Yeah. And you can all, well, you can all slide in Rachel's DMs as well and congratulate her on her upcoming wedding. Oh and... my God. <laughs> You're all invited. <laughs> and then it'll be swiftly called off when she meets the parents in New Year. <laughs> and uh, her partner's mum does not does take not a shine like to me. that. Yeah. <laughs> But guys, listen, we hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, thank you so much to everyone who's been downloading and been messaging the page even when we've not had the episodes out. Um, and there has been people that we've still had quite a, a lot of listeners through as we've not been releasing new episodes. We do hope to, to be back with a second series um, in the new year. We do not, not quite sure what format, just quite yet. We have been in talks. We've been talking to some people. Don't you worry, to each other. we're going to come back. And we'll, we, we would love to, to do a second series. So if you would like to, to see that, please do let us know and obviously tell your pals and comment and like and, and share. But to be honest, we wanted to do this. Not only did we just obviously enjoy doing the podcast, but we wanted to give us a wee Christmas treat to you if you've been a big fan of us and you wanted something to, to listen. We we Christmas treat for you. Are we you driving home to Christmas playlist podcast? Driving home to Christmas, if all you want for Christmas is us, then... <laughs> 
years have had it. You are welcome. What are you say? In the meantime, obviously we, we do always say like if you've got any submissions, if you'd like us to talk about for a, a potential setting series, do get in touch, let us know any stories or questions or anything like that you've got for us. Obviously the the email address is debatingdatingpod at gmail.com is that right? Yeah, it's debatingdatingpod at gmail.com. And what else can we do Rachel if you remember this line that you usually would oh, say? Oh, do you know what? When we had Zoom I could read it off the page. Uh, what? They can slide into our DMs? Correct. Oh, you've clearly a practice saying that. No, you're in a relationship. Yeah, what can I say? Don't need it anymore. <laughs> you can slide into the debate at debating dating on Instagram and Twitter and, yeah, and TikTok debating. now by the way which oh, I'm yeah. quite big on these days oh, are by the you? Way. Yeah, oh well congrats TikTok. thank you very much I'm too old for that I know this is also the first time because this is the first time since I've been back doing live gigs and stuff like that since we've been doing the podcast uh, just probably should give a plug you can come if you'd like to come and see me do stand up uh, I do have still tickets on sale for the Stand Comedy Club in Glasgow on Wednesday the 23rd of March there is three other dates at the stand alone they're all sold out and so do get those quick maybe a wee Christmas present for you if you'd like to come and see me do stand up and again we'll we'll see where things go down the line maybe we could be doing a wee live show of our own I would love to do a live show also what I would love to do is make a little coffee page and then you guys could maybe give us buy us a wee coffee for Christmas and it means I could stop being a babysitter and Working in a bar, how great would that be? Yeah, all the money will go to Rachel. I'm doing fine, to be honest. (laughs) Speaking of coffee, I should say, by the way, for people watching, uh, you might have noticed my mug. So at the end of the first series, as a wee present, when I was going to pick up the the camera gear that I'd I'd loaned you out while we were recording on Zoom, I was going to hand you a wee Christmas, a wee gift of a mug with a debating dating logo on it. As a wee minding. As a wee minding. I bought two of them. And so I went on to Etsy. Mm-hmm. Who, by the way, didn't deliver the Christmas jumper that I was waiting on, so I had to wear this other one Boo. today. Um, but I went on Etsy, and so it was like this thing, and it said, uh, add your text and your image. So I sent them, it was just the debate and dating logo, that's all I wanted on yeah. it. And they are like, okay, no bother. They sent it out, and literally, the mug has the, like, what would you call it? The oh, sort of generic that. sort of logo that they put. So it literally says on the mug, add your text, add your image. <laughs> And has a an image of this family, a family? on a beach. <laughs> so I'm going to I'll, I'll put another thing of that up on the YouTube. But unbelievable. So I thought I would just have this today because this was meant to say debate and dating on this mug. Oh my god. Maybe we can try and get some sorted. Maybe me and you'll have some merch. Yeah, absolutely. I know. Maybe that's how I fucked it. Buy me a coffee. Maybe we'll. If you would like to buy a mug that says "Add your text and add your image," I've got two <laughs> that I will be selling uh, to the highest bidder. <laughs> But listen, guys, thank you so much for for, uh, listening as ever. We really hope you enjoyed this one and we'll hopefully speak to you in the new year. But from myself and Rachel, speak to you soon. Bye.